Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed day of the Lord, everyone. You're welcome to today's prayer service. This is the King Scott Bible Teaching Prayer and Leadership Development Service. Today we, we feel led to pray over families and loved ones. And uh, we're just going to take a few biblical uh, texts uh, to um, uh, foundate our prayers on those and, and pray. But I, I feel a burden uh, to pray over families today. And so we're just going to go with that. But well, let's start off with prayers. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. You are the administrator of the kingdom of God. And we present ourselves before you. We humble ourselves before you. We submit to your superior wisdom, to your divine technology, to your superior intelligence. We yield to the plan of God that you have come to even help us actualize. The family is of God. The concept of family is a God concept. And so Holy Spirit, we ask that even as we present and execute these prayers, that you will guide us, that you will inspire the thoughts, the words, and let the words of our mouth, the vibrations that go forth, even in these prayers, be as directed by the Spirit. May they hit the bull's eye, O oh God. May they hit the target. May they accomplish that which pleases you, O oh Father. For you said your word that goes forth out of your mouth does not return back to you void or empty. <laughs> When he comes back, when he returns, he says, done, sir. <laughs> Completed, accomplished, mission accomplished. So we pray that as your word goes forth today, even by way of prayers, that it will accomplish that which pleases you. It will prosper in the thing for which it was sent, which is to not only insulate and shield and consecrate God's people and their families and loved ones, but more so to stir, align each one with prophetic destiny for your glory. So much is going on in our world today and we, we know and we see the attack on the mountains of God, the, the mountains of the earth that the Lord God created, there's a, there's a multi-dimensional attack on all of the mountains and the family is not excluded. But Lord, this might even lead us to begin to pray over each of the mountain, take one day for every of the mountain. But today we're praying for the family and for loved ones. So Holy Spirit, we ask that you would inspire, that you would anoint, that you would activate the graces of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the wisdom of God will be released even through these prayers. That wisdom that defeats principalities and powers, that wisdom that is above all that the gates of Hades can muster, can put together, and also as it was in the day of the Lord Jesus, on the day of Moses, when you sent deliverers into the earth and the enemy tried to kill them, tried to take them out. By your wisdom, you preserved your servants. By your wisdom, you preserved your messengers. Even in the same way we pray, Lord, by your wisdom, by your power, by your divine orchestration and ordination, you will preserve those that you've anointed and appointed to do great things upon the earth. For we know if left in the hands of the enemy, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Some want to kill them while they're in the womb. Some want to kill them after they are born. Then you got diseases to deal with. Then you got factors that want to derail them from destiny. Then you got crime and violence that want to take their life in their prime. And so on and so forth. But Lord, as many as you have ordained 
and sent to planet Earth to be a blessing to mankind, to be a blessing to this generation, to be a blessing to humanity in one form or another, in one fashion or another. Lord, today our prayers go uh, be released into the atmosphere. May the angels of your presence, the angels who stand by the golden altar of incense in heaven, receive these prayers that are offered, going to be offered as incense. May they offer them even with the prayers of saints throughout all generations for every saint, every prophet, every priest, every messenger of God, every father, every mother who cried out and prayed concerning family and their children. Let our prayers join with their prayers, resound in the realm of the spirit like the sound of many waters. Let it cause heaven to respond in ways that are outstanding. Oh, yes, God, that you would respond in ways that are outstanding, ways that beat human intelligence, human rebellion, human obstinacy, and even machinations and things that they've raised up for your word tells us. Although the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord raises a standard against him. That the flood of ungodliness not overwhelm the righteous. May the flood of iniquity not overwhelm, O oh God, saints. That our sons and our daughters, O oh God, will find delight in the pursuit of the presence of God, the pursuit of the glory of God, the pursuit of righteousness, that they may learn, Lord, even at an early age, righteousness has a reward. But the Bible tells us the wages, the reward of sin, evil, is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus. The Holy Spirit will welcome you, guide us, enable us, steady our hands, Steady our hearts, steady our gaze, steady our sights. Infuse us with strength in our inner man by your spirit that dwells in us, Lord Jesus. Infuse us with strength, dynamite, dunamis strength, a dynamic strength of the spirit. Cause us to align with the mind of Christ, that this mind being you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We want to reflect we want to be aligned to and reflect the mind of Christ, even in these prayers. So again, Holy Spirit, we thank you. For as many as are part of this service right now, in person, online, and as many as will come across this, Lord, let it be an activation of your graces, an activation of the spirit of supplication and prayers, an activation, oh God, of the overwhelming burden of the Lord. An activation of the zeal of the Lord. And by adventure, Lord, may a young man, a young woman, a, a boy, a girl, a child out there who comes in contact with this, who is destined for greatness, destined for a divine appointment, destined for prophetic destiny, may their prophetic destinies be activated by the orchestration of heaven and by the move of the Spirit of God. Lord, that you would trigger. Ah, something within their spirit. Trigger your grace. Trigger the anointing. Trigger the call of God. For as many who have turned away from the call of God upon their lives for one reason or another, Lord, that dreams and visions will begin to come in the night seasons. Visions of the night come upon them, Lord, while they are upon their beds. Sometimes terrifying, terrifying enough to cause them to not shake it off, terrifying enough to cause them to not disregard, terrifying enough to cause them to seek answers and to cry and call to you. Many, Lord, are in crack houses. Many, Lord, are in terrible places. Many are locked up in jail, in prison. Many are even in, in, in death row right now. And many are 
are, are bound in, you know, upon hospital beds. Many are even waiting, don't, you know, don't even know their fate if the hand of the surgeon is going to abort them from their mother's wombs. Lord, that you will intervene by your mercy, that you will intervene by your hand, O oh God. Those ones that you've appointed and ordained for greatness. Those ones that you have predetermined and predesigned for destiny. That the hands of the ignorant, the works of rebellious people, obstinate people who only see one way, don't see the other way, don't see the full picture of what God is doing will not snatch them, will not cut their lives short. Oh, Father, that one who is trying to pull the trigger, Lord, that it will fail in the name of Jesus. You will snatch them out from the hands of death, from the hands of the destroyer, the hands of the one who comes to kill and destroy. Glorify yourself, oh God. Glorify yourself, oh Father. And we say amen and amen and amen. We're going to go right quick and we'll do some more prayers. Prayers over family and loved ones. Let's start off by saying quickly that family is a God concept. And that's the thing humans don't understand. Humans think, you know, we're the, we're the best thing that happened since the sun began to shine. So it's all about us. Whatever decisions we come up with, that's it. In our own mind, in our own thinking, in our faculties, we think, yeah, that's the best decision. And damn anybody who criticizes it. Damn anyone, anyone who's, who doesn't agree with that. Okay, you can do whatever you want. And our heart goes out to those who will be affected by your bad decisions. But remember one thing, oh humans, you will give an account to the one who made the heavens and the earth. On that day, you will stand before him and you will give account of every decision you made. You will give an account of every judgment call you made. You give it, especially when you are in leadership positions, especially when you are in a position of influence and people actually listen to you and follow you and think you know what you're talking about. You are going to give account of it on that day. But you must know, and we say again, family is a God concept. You didn't design it. It wasn't by you. It wasn't by humans. We didn't just evolve. Humans evolved, evolved from where to where. Where are you evolving to? Do we look like we're evolving right now? Evolving to what? Ah, the wisdom of God formed creation. The wisdom of God established the ordinances of creation. The wisdom of God established the ordinances of existence. And, and, and we call them mountains. This is one of them, the mountain of the family. Family is a God concept. Yeah, I got to go because I, I want to just pray. But look at what Paul declares in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 14 to 19. He says, for this reason, I, I can't go into the de details, but, you know, when you read the earlier verses, you see him talking about the plan of God, which is packaged in Christ, the wisdom of God that is found in Christ. And so he said, for that reason, understanding these things, knowing the wisdom of God. People don't know the wisdom of God. That's why they take the, make the decisions they make. People don't understand the wisdom of God. That's why they turn against God. That's why they even oppose God. And that's why they strike deals with, with the devil, with, with, with Satan, with the gates of Hades, with the mystery of iniquity. They don't understand. But, but Paul says, when you understand the wisdom of God, it will cause you to take a different posture. Just like he did, when you understand the wisdom of God, it will cause you to cause correct. It will cause you to do some things. And in his case, he said, when I understood this, for that reason, I bow my knees in humble submission. In humble submission to the wisdom of God. When you understand the wisdom of God, you now begin to see how foolish human decisions can be. You begin to see how foolish the supposed wisdom of humans really is for this reason i bow my knees to the father look at that term father father that's so you see he is the first father <laughs> he is the first father and father is a term that goes with family 
the father is the is the is the head of the family father family <laughs> and that interesting i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ look at verse 15 from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named wait a minute oh there's family in heaven <laughs> did you see that there's family in heaven. So family didn't start from planet Earth. That's how you know it's a mountain of the Lord. So for those who have not heard our message on the mountain, how you know the mountain? Because when we dealt with that, we talked about how to determine what is a mountain from a prophetic perspective. What does the Bible consider a mountain of society or a mountain of the Earth? Now, we're not talking about natural mountains now. Let me try to clarify. So whatever you see in the natural has a spiritual a parallel if you will as a matter of fact it's the other way around if it's in the natural then it, it was already in the realm of the spirit okay so it was already in the realm of the spirit even humans up to humans you know first we were in, in the thought of god when the mind of god when he said let us make humans in our image according to our likeness there was a picture on his mind and and folks will tell you all things are created twice it's first created in your mind first created in your perception or in a, in a state of, you know, being conceptualized or as a concept before you actualize it. So in the same way, the mountains are foundations of the earth. They were designed by God. So we, we went into it and we said, well, when you look at what people call mountains, the first question you want to ask yourself is, did God create that? So for instance, religion. People will say, oh, the mountain of religion, mountain of religion. Okay, fine. When you take that word religion and you understand what religion means, then you got to ask yourself, did God create religion? <laughs> the answer is a clear no. And every, every, every good student of the Bible knows that. God did not create religion. Jesus, Jesus was not just a religious leader. We are the ones who say, use those terms, but he came as the way. He came as Mashiach. So in other words, you turn your back on him, you're the one who's losing out. All right. You can't say, okay, I can go here or go there. No, you can do that with Christ. But anyway, so the mountains, are they are the foundations of the earth. They uphold the earth. Not only in terms, so the physical mountains uphold the physical structure of the earth, but the prophetic mountains or the spiritual mountains, if you will, uphold the the, the 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 concept, you know, the principles, the governing principles that run the earth. That's why we can't escape from, you can't escape from it because that's the way it was designed. In all of our knowledge and understanding and wisdom and whatever, we're still going to find ourselves operating according to the design of the mountains. It's like we're on planet Earth. How do you get away from planet Earth? <laughs> How do you get out from this planet apart from death? So we can say, okay, go out to outer space. Well, okay. <laughs> but really, we come in, but there's no way out except maybe through death. So in the same way, these mountains were already designed to run the Earth. So they are principles that govern the Earth. They are principles that, you know, the, the, the cycles of Earth, the 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 you know everything that you see on the earth. I mean, think about a constellation, for instance. They run like clockwork. Somebody designed that. Somebody put that concept in place. I mean, think about it. The elements of the earth, water coming from hydrogen, two molecules of hydrogen, one molecule of oxygen. Look at that. It just comes together, it forms water. Now, of course, you know if you make two molecules of oxygen to two molecules of hydrogen, you're not going to get water anymore. It's something else you're going to get. Or you make it one molecule of hydrogen, one molecule of oxygen, it's something else you're going to get. If it changes one bit significantly, it becomes something else. Who designed, who, did, who made it so? Why should it be so? Do these things just run by themselves? No, somebody, when you look at creation, there's intelligence. So you cannot say, Non-intelligence formed intelligence. How does that work? Our scientists, how does that work? 
And, you know, God has given humans great wisdom, great understanding. We are exploring the earth. We're exploring the, not just the earth. As a matter of fact, we're exploring, you know, beyond our earth. The galaxy, I don't think we've gone past our galaxy yet. So we can be, we can be talking about universe. You know, it, we're studying, we're discovering things. We're finding out principles. Think about mathematics. Think about physics. These are laws. And once you know the laws and you apply them, you, you, you can almost predict what, what results you're going to get. Somebody designed it that way. That's the way it works. You plant a seed in the soil and it's good soil and every, all, all conditions being equal. You know what you're going to get. See that? You breathe in oxygen. You know what it's going to do in you. You're thirsty. You know what to go for. It's water. It's water. You can change it. It's okay. From henceforth, I will no longer breathe in oxygen. I want to breathe in nitrogen or something. <laughs> You're not going to stay for too long. That I can promise you. See that? These are laws. These are principles that govern the earth. And what humans are doing is we're beginning to identify them and then narrow them down into equations, narrow them down into formulas so we can work with them. So we can come back and say, okay, yeah, I remember that formula. Let's do it this way. Then we know what we're going to get. That's the way it is. God designed it. And Paul is talking about that same wisdom. By the same wisdom that created the earth, in fact, greater to a greater degree, is what gave us Christ. It's just that humans don't see how to bring these two things together. Just like you cannot avoid oxygen. You need oxygen to survive. You need water. Even if you don't drink it, I mean, at some point, you're going to need to drink water or drink something liquid. In the same way, you need Christ. I don't know how to make people see that. You need Christ. So to accept one and reject the other is a half story. You're not complete yet. I guess I'm preempting myself. But look at what Paul says. From whom the family, the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So there is family in heaven. Think about that. There is family in heaven because family is a God concept. Family is not exclusive to planet earth. Family did not originate from planet earth. Family came from heaven through the Lord God, maker of the heavens and the earth. So what you see on earth is a replica of what is already in heaven or what is already in the realm of God, in the eternal dimensions of God, the eternal realms of God. So it's replicating that dimension or that realm on the earth. And Paul says he bows his knee, he humbles himself to, you know, in submission to this God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So do you see that? The whole family in heaven and earth is named from the Father. He is the source. He is the origin. He, that's why he's called the Father, because Father means the source, the life giver, the one that, you know, gave the, 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 the life. Life came, the one from whom life came. Father of all, uh, uh, God of all flesh, Father of spirits. That's right. It says he bows his knees and he prays that he, the Father, would grant you according to the riches of his glory. My God, what does that, what does that sound like? What does that mean? There, so there is, there is riches in the glory of God. There is glorious riches in God. People just look and say, oh, it's boring, it's boring. I don't want to go to church. And, and by the way, I apologize for the church, okay? Because it's not your fault that you find church boring. But please understand something before you write us off, before you, you shut us down. Please understand that we are also humans like you. We, are, we also find ourselves on the same planet like you do. And we, we are faced with the same things that you are faced with on this planet. But we have, by the grace of God, an advantage that we actually found out there is a realm that is called the God realm, that is called the eternal realm. And we're actually pursuing, we're seeking to discover that realm. We're seeking to embody, align with, and perhaps become bearers, carriers, representatives, ambassadors of that realm. Now, 
when we fall short in our communication, when we fall short in our trying to replicate that realm to you or to the rest of humanity, when we fall short in any way in our in our quest to reveal that dimension, don't don't kill us, <laughs> don't attack us. We would rather say, you come and see what we've seen. That's what the Bible says. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You got to come taste for yourself. You can't stand aloof or stand a million miles away and call us ridiculous. You can't do that. Think about it. Many of us were where you are right now. Think about that. We Many of us used to be there. And at some point we said, not anymore. <laughs> At some point, we, we decided to move away from there, like, okay, you know what? I've been there. I've done that. I've seen it all. I don't think that's what I want. But but think about it. Millions all over the world, millions all over the world, coming out from a life of sin, coming out from a life of iniquity, and turning to God, and are staking their claim on it, saying, you know what? If you're going to kill me, I've found something. You got to ask yourself, oh, human, what is it that they have found? They may not be able to tell you the story in vivid colors, you know, in crystal clear clarity, but they've found something. Something has happened. And every now and then, some of us fall short. I get it. But don't use the ones that fall short to now judge everybody else. You need to come and taste. You're missing out something. Look at what this man is saying. There's riches in his glory. But he's also praised that to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. If you don't have his spirit in your inner man, what will contain that strength? How would you contain the strength of the Lord? By the way, if this man is praying for strength, it means that strength is needed. Do you know what the strength of the Lord feels like? And we pray that today. Oh, Lord, we bow our knees and we bow our heads and we bow our hearts in humble submission to the Father of glory, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even as we pray and ask, Lord, that you will strengthen us with might in our inner man. Strengthen families, oh God. Strengthen fathers, oh God. Strengthen mothers. Strengthen, Lord, children. Strengthen, oh God, loved ones with strength. In our, that's the place to start from. We've got to have inner strength that comes through the Holy Spirit. I pray, oh God, for inner strength. It can only come through your Holy Spirit. That Christ, but see where that strength is packaged, it's in Christ, that Christ may dwell in your heart. Another word for heart is your spirit, your soul, through faith. Oh Lord, yes, that Christ will dwell. That's our prayer, Lord, for families, families over the earth, for the very concept. We even pray, first and foremost, for the concept of family. Thank you. Lord, for the concept of family. Thank you for establishing the concept of family. Thank you for the mountain of family that you designed and gave us a gift to planet us. And those of us who are beneficiaries of that concept, we come to say thank you. Some may look at family and despise it, maybe because of their particular lived experiences, maybe because of you know trauma, whatever happened in their own cases. But I want to ask you, until you make contact with the designer until you make contact with the artist, until you make contact with the architect, the one who designed this thing called family. You can't, you can't write it off yet. Again, like I said, you may have unfortunately dealt with bad representatives and we have them all over the place. You can have fathers, biological fathers as bad representatives you can have biological mothers as bad representatives of the concept of family. You can have bad uncles, bad aunts, bad whatever. Those are just bad examples of the concept of family. But the question is, what is the concept of family? What was the original intent for the concept of family? That's what you got to find out. And there is one who maintains that. There is one who holds that truth, and that is the Lord God Almighty. So if you don't come to him and begin to understand what it means to be a part of his family, you don't know what family is yet. You can define it however you want. You can say, well, you know, just it don't matter. But family came from him is the point. Verse 18, that you may be able to come... You know, being rooted and grounded in love. Yes, Lord, that's our prayer. The Lord, 
the love that you designed for the family to communicate to the planet, Lord, will begin to manifest. Manifest by the power of your spirit. Manifest through your wisdom. Manifest through families, actual families, through fathers, through mothers, through sons, through daughters, through, through children, oh God. Love, oh God, the love dimensions of God be released upon the planet through this concept of family. Did you, did you understand that? That's a powerful key. So love, God chose to use family to, to release love. His love dimensions come through the concept of family. So the family gives you an opportunity to experience, oh, the, the love of God. Think about that. Think about that. Family gives us an opportunity to experience the love of God. So when you have fathers, fathers are supposed to represent God. Mothers are supposed to represent the mother dimension of God, the El Shaddai dimension of God. Think about it. So father and mother come, coming together are supposed to bring such love into the life of a, of a child, the child that they bring forth into the world. But you see how chaotic disorder has messed the whole thing up, how Satan has messed it up. Oh, Lord, that being rooted and grounded in love, we may be able to comprehend. So we cannot comprehend until we are rooted in love. Yeah. So there's a correlation between comprehension and love. There's a correlation for parent, for uh, intending parents. Please, if, if you're planning to bring forth a child, think about that. There is a correlation between comprehension and love. So when you shower a child with love, they are able to comprehend. So comprehension, oh my God, love is a gateway to comprehension. Love, pure love, not, you know, pure love is a, is a gateway to comprehension. Think about it. See how principles come out from the word of God. See how wisdom, powerful nuggets come out from the word of God. When you shower love, when you release love, you open up comprehension. You open up the ability of the human soul to to understand, to comprehend, to embrace, to receive knowledge. Ah, yeah, yeah. I wish my African parents would hear that and understand that. So it's not about the, the, the punitive measures. It's not about, you know, I know they say spare the rod and spoil the child, but that's not scripture, quite frankly. Love is the best way to go. Love is the best way. Plant love in that child and their comprehension will open. Look at it, Paul is saying it there. That when you're rooted and grounded in love, you may be able to comprehend. Oh, Father, may your love be released to our sons, to our daughters, to our children, to families all over the earth, especially families of God, families of God's people. And where, Lord, hatred has been the order of the day, we begin to ask that your love will overwhelm. Let your love dispel hatred. Let your love cause hatred to give way. Let hatred give way to love. Don't hate love. And that's why when your leaders are fomenting hatred, they're not helping you, society. They're not helping you, students. You follow a political party, whichever you follow, but all they are spewing is hatred. They want you to hate the other. They want you to hate this, hate that, hate that, hate that, cancel that, tear that down, destroy that, cancel. You are shutting down comprehension. You're shutting down your ability for greater comprehension of truths. You're limiting yourself. That's why God is love and God is omniscient. See that? He's the omniscient one, the all-knowing one. Why? Because he is love. He is love. And so because his love is omniscient, he knows all things, he's all-knowing. So the more of his love we embrace, the greater we know. The more of his love we embrace, the more we know. And then, speaking of love, the greatest love, he says, is to know the love of Christ. <laughs> to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge. So there's an end where the knowledge has an end. Oh, my Lord. You can't handle this one. This is way, way, way beyond human comprehension. The love of Christ. Way beyond but look at the next thing that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So love is the container that embraces or that holds all of this content, all of this information, all of this knowledge, even to the fullness of God. Saints of God, I dare challenge us. Let's begin to go the way of love. Look at it there. 
through love we can come even to the fullness of God. Lord, we declare this in the atmosphere. We pray this, Lord, over the earth. We pray this over the mountain of family. We pray this over families, oh God, wherever they are found. Every family, Lord, that, Lord, your love will begin to permeate. Your love will begin to go forth. Your love will begin to take root through fathers, through mothers. And in some cases where there are no fathers and mothers, through guardians, through uncles, through aunts, through even neighbors, oh God, that your love will begin to permeate through families. That your intent to release love into the earth through the families will come to establishment in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now let's talk about how God prophetically blessed the first family. You find that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. Then God said, let us make humans in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image or humans in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. See that? They were created, they didn't evolve. You, you know, knowledge begins with truth. When, 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 when truth is discarded, whatever knowledge you assume or purport to you know, ascribe to or attain or gain is, uh, is actually with a negative in front of it. See that? Because you've gone, you've gone to the other direction and you know on, on a scale when, when you go past the zero uh, uh, mark to the other side, you, it don't matter the figure, there's a negative sign in front of it. So it's negative. It's negative, whatever you, you want to call it. Truth is where it all starts. Whatsoever things are true begins with that. It begins with truth. If it's not true, then there's no point. Why do people cherish lies? Why do people love to build upon lies? You know truth, but you don't want to accept truth. You just want to keep, keep you know, building upon lies. One day it's going to collapse because it's not a foundation you can stand upon. You can't trust it. You can't trust it. So God made them male and female and that's why we have them so don't you, you should not be encouraging not you say you don't know what a, a woman do you also do you not know what a man is say you don't know what a woman is that means you don't know what a man is then but god made them male and female and then look at this he blessed them so when you disconnect from that truth you miss the blessing that comes with it that's it's as simple as that he made them that way he created them male and female then he blessed them so there's a blessing upon being male. There's a blessing upon being female. So when you say you're not, you know, whatever term you want to go with, not here to bash nobody, but we are preachers of truth. We are, the Bible said, the priest of the Lord, truth must be, you know, come from his lips, must be one who proclaims the truth of God. So it's our duty to proclaim the truth of God's word. People can take it however they want, right? He blessed them. So this is the wisdom of God, male and female, and he blessed them. So he blessed the male uh, uh, person or gender, however you want to say it, and blessed the female also. There is a blessing upon that. So when you detest it or you try to change it, you want to be something else, you'll shine away or moving away from the blessing that is upon it. No, what you should seek rather is healing and deliverance from whatever is causing you not to appreciate the wisdom of God. That's what you want to be delivered from. That's what you want to be healed from. Why, why, what is causing the problem? What is causing the disconnect? That is what you want to find and get to the root cause of that. And I know for some people, maybe they were molested and stuff. Things happen in their childhood. And so they detest, oh my Lord. Then you need healing. From that, you need healing. Don't go further into damaging yourself. You need healing. And God can heal you. The Lord Jesus can heal you. There is healing for everyone. Because God put a blessing on that. That blessing can be activated. And yes, Lord, that's our prayer. We begin to activate, Lord, the blessing that you have placed on the male and on the female. For the scripture tells us, God bless them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. Lord, let the blessings that you have put upon humans be activated because you did this for the purpose of family. 
So we declare, oh God, an activation, an activation in the spirit, an activation in the soul, an activation in the body, an activation in the mind, an activation in the wheel, an activation in the emotion, an activation in the intellect, an activation in the imagination, an activation in the memory, an activation, oh God, in the, every layer of the soul. Let it be an activation of the blessing of God for you. Place the blessing upon the first family prophetically. So, Lord, we glean that blessing. That blessing is eternal. That blessing came from Almighty God. It has not lost its power. So, Lord, we prophesy, let it be an activation of that blessing that Yahweh placed over mankind. That blessing that Yahweh placed over men. That blessing that Yahweh placed over women. That blessing that Yahweh placed over over the family. Let there be an activation. We call forth for an activation by the power and the orchestration of the Holy Spirit. And we give you thanks for it, God. But watch what that blessing does. That is so critical. The blessing puts you in a place of governorship. The blessing puts you in a place of leadership because humans were created for leadership. Humans were created to be caretakers of the earth and leaders of our creation. So Lord, we receive the leadership activation. Let the leadership potentials begin to be activated, oh God, upon us, upon humans, especially those who will follow the way of God, those who will at, at, acknowledge and, and, and be grateful for the creation of God, for your creativity. Lord, let there be an activation of that leadership blessing. Let there be an activation of that potential, Lord, leadership potential, and the wisdom to be caretakers of the earth according to divine design. And for that, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's talk about Christ is God's blessing to the families, to families. Christ is the blessing of God to families. Acts chapter 3, verse 24 to 26. Yes, all, uh, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these days, the days in which the apostles lived in and said these things were prophesied. And even now we're prophesying things declaring things, and we know that, you know, it comes to pass at the appointed time. These things, when the prophets were prophesying them, they looked foolish. They sounded foolish. People didn't believe them. People were like, what are you talking about? But if you truly heard from God, if you truly heard from God and you declare it, then it's only a matter of time it will come to pass. It says, you are sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers saying to Abraham, and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So observe, this is a covenant. This is a covenant. And observe also, it affects all families, non-exempt. So that's how you come in. You're not exempt from this covenant. It's a covenant that God made with all families of the earth in one that was to be called a seed of Abraham one that was to come through the lineage of Abraham. So we're not talking about Isaac, because of course Isaac came later later in, in life. There are people who have been born before Isaac, so you couldn't say it was Isaac. But if God is speaking about all families and he's speaking about one who is prophetic, speaking about one who has been foreordained, and we saw in one of our messages, he was foreordained from the foundation of the world foreordained from the foundation of the world, all right? So in that seed of Abraham, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So there's a blessing attached, a covenant blessing, I dare say, attached to, uh, uh, that, that can come upon all families of the earth through this seed of Abraham, hallelujah. Through the seed of Abraham. And how do we know? Verse 26, it says, to you first, you Jews, God raised up his servant. So it was very clear. His servant, Jesus, Yeshua, and then sent him to bless you. See that? In turning away every one of you from iniquity. So God planned this thing. So don't, don't, be, don't tell me it's the white man's religion. You don't know what you're talking about. Don't tell me, by the way, Jesus was not white to start with. That's at the floor of that argument too. So it's not a white man's religion, white man's Christ. And I understand the renditions that came from Europe and all by U Europeans. Yeah, but yeah, and the people say that because of slavery. But you must go beyond human machinations. That's what we keep there. There's a spiritual dimension. 
until you touch the reality of the spiritual dimension, you've not got, if you keep looking from the five senses or from, from the realities of planet Earth or from experiences, you keep painting these pictures from your own personal experiences and that you want to fit everybody into your, not everybody went through what you went through. Okay, so you can paint with a broad brush, right? And our heart goes out to those who experienced such terrible inhumanity, man's inhumanity to fellow man. We, you know, the, the Bible doesn't support that. God is the first freedom fighter, if you remember, when he called uh, uh, Israel out of, out of Egypt, the first freedom fighter. So you talk about civil rights. God was the first civil rights activist, if you will. <laughs> he was the first civil rights activist. He was the one who said, let my people go. They cannot stay in the house of bondage. Let them go. That's God. God doesn't want that. So don't, don't put associate God with that. And so those who are painting a wrong picture and trying to humiliate and subjugate all the people, they too will give account for that. Don't you get it? But you seek out the truth. You rise above your hurt. Rise above your resentment. Rise above your bitterness and find out the true purpose for your existence. Why are you here to begin with? Forget what people have done to you. Why, I, why did God put you, did God put you in your mother's womb? There was no writing that said, born to be a slave. God forbid. It is the circumstances of life, unfortunately, because humans fell from the garden. Don't forget that. Don't forget the fall. We fell short of the glory of God, and it's been evil since then. So the one to be blamed is Satan. He's the one to blame. He's one who derailed the whole course, derailed the whole program. But some of us are beginning to discover our way back to the truth of God, discovering our way back to the original intent and the original purposes of God. Hallelujah. And we invite you to do the same. Look at that. So he said, for well, send the Jews that God sends to you first, his servant Yeshua, Jesus, to bless you. So don't, don't, don't say, hey, 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 you know, you don't have nothing to do with Jesus. Jesus is of the wife. No, he was sent to bless you. Do you see that? Jesus came to be a blessing to you. And by the way, when we say blessing, I know some people's minds are going to dollars and pounds and yens and all of that stuff. No, look at the blessing. It was very specific to turn you away from your iniquities. Do you know what iniquity? Iniquity is to be bent, to be crooked, to be twisted. So it means you're not straight. You lost something. You are bent. Life has bent you. Circumstances of life have bent you. Situation have bent you. But there is a beyond natural situations. There is a force. There is a force that bends people. It is the force that we we now know as the mystery of iniquity. It's a mystery. It's able to bend things, bend creation, bend you know, creation away from original purpose, away from original intent. So unfortunately, that's, so think about it. Look at it from a natural perspective. You, you probably were born as a, a healthy child, happy child, loving and all of that. And then here comes terrible situations of life. Somebody molests that child and inflicts them with, 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 with a terrible pain and a terrible stigma and, and trauma that they live with for the rest of their life, except God helps them. Think about it. And then you go through horrible things in life, lose parents and so on and so forth. And now you can't train yourself in school and then some give themselves to prostitution. Oh my God, your life is battered and messed up. God didn't do that to you. God didn't do that. Satan did. He's the one who comes to steal. See that? Jesus was very clear. He's the one who comes to steal. What did he steal from you? He stole your joy from you. And that's the first thing he actually tries to steal. Stole your joy from you. Stole your healthy relationship with parents. Stole everything. Stole your opportunities. Stole your, your, your you know, your, 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 your peace. For some, stole your health. But watch, he's not stopping there until you do something. If you keep staying with, he's, he wants to take it to the next level to kill. He actually wants to kill you. And so we see people are being killed all over the place. People are dying all over the place of all kinds of causes. Now, the dying is not the issue. The issue is, did you ever live to fulfill purpose, to be straightened? Were you ever straightened from that bent position? Jesus came to bless you. And what is the blessing? To turn you away from iniquity, to straighten us up. That's what he came to do. To free us from the power 
and the bondage of iniquity. Iniquity is the is the greatest burden, the greatest, oh, I, I, I'm short of words to describe it, that all humanity have come under from the Garden of Eden. It's about iniquity. That's what it came to save us from. So you see, preacher, I, I, that's another uh, proof to what I've been saying. He didn't just come to save you from sin. Sin are the offshoots, products of iniquity. He came to save us from iniquity. He came to bless us, to turn us away from iniquity. Lord, we pray that we receive the blessing that is Yeshua. We receive the blessing that is Christ Jesus. The blessing that the Father gave to all mankind, to all the families of the earth. Lord, we declare that blessing is alive and well. For on the third day he rose again. Death could not hold him down. Grave could not hold him down. Hades could not hold him down. The principalities and powers of darkness could not hold him down. Satan could not hold him down. Lord, none of that could hold him down. He rose in glory and in victory and in power. And he lives forevermore as king of kings, lord of lords. And in his name, Lord, salvation is preached to all mankind. In his name, redemption is declared to all mankind. So, Lord, we thank you for Yeshua. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for his sacrificial death on the cross and his, in, his re, in his resurrection and ascension and, and the power of his name that he has given to us. And so we declare that blessing that he came with, that blessing that he is indeed, that it is released upon families to break the powers of iniquity in whatever way iniquity is holding people, holding folks. Iniquity in the, same, in the sense of loss of destiny. Iniquity in the sense of loss of direction. Iniquity in the sense of loss of purpose. Iniquity, Lord, in the sense of wallowing in sin like a, like a, like a pig wallows in dirt. Oh, Father, break the power of iniquity over the lives of people. Lord Jesus, may your name go forth into the, 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 the families. Go forth into families. Go forth into homes to the north, to the east, to the west, to the south, the name of Jesus. Break the power, break the chains of iniquity, break the strong grip of iniquity, the grip of iniquity that manifests like ancestral curses, cause it to be broken. The grip of iniquity that manifests as disease and sickness and infirmity, cause it to be broken. The grip of iniquity that manifests as death in the family, cause it to be broken. The grip of iniquity that manifests as poverty and lack, cause it to be broken. The grip of iniquity that manifests as foolishness and, and, and just crazy lifestyle, cause it to be broken, Father. The grip of iniquity that manifests as drug abuse, substance abuse, Lord, cause it to be destroyed, cause it to be broken. Set your people free. We receive your blessing, O Yeshua. We receive your blessing for families. We receive your blessing for loved ones. We receive your blessing, oh God, for our families, for those con connected to us, to loved ones. Let the, the family, the, 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 the blessing of Christ permeate families and break, Lord, the power of iniquity, the hold of iniquity over absent fathers. Absentee fathers, go back home in the name of Jesus. Wayward mothers, go back home in the name of Jesus. Wayward children, turn back to your parents in the name of Jesus. Let honor and respect come back to the family, oh God. Let love be released back into the family. Let joy of the Lord come back to the family. Let purpose be redefined, oh God, in accordance with the will of God for families, Father. Oh, Lord, let the grip of Satan be broken over families. Let the hold of Satan be broken over families because Yeshua was given to be a blessing to all families in the earth because we were named after the Father. Thank you, Lord. And quickly, we want to talk about the greatest blessing of them all. The greatest blessing of them all is we, we find is, is eternal life. Is eternal life. Think about it, child of God. Think about it, humans. Think about it, people of the earth. If you accomplish whatever you accomplish on planet Earth, but you, you miss this, oh my God, you missed it all. <clears throat> you missed it all. <clears throat> the greatest blessing is to ensure that your name is in the, in the Lamb's Book of Life. Revelation 20, verse 11 to 12, Then I saw a great white throne, and the one who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled. So you see, the heaven and the earth are not permanent. <laughs> That's what we, so this is why, so okay, let's go back to theology. This is why we go to heaven, because God is going to wipe away the present 
Now, when it says heaven, it's not where God dwells. It's the expanse of space. It's the intermediary heaven, the starry heavens, right? And the, this earth is going to be wiped away. The Bible says from, from his presence, the earth and the heaven fled away. Another verse will say, we're rolled away like a scroll, right? And they were found no more. So this present heaven, this present earth rolled away. Oh, my God, scientists, have you bothered to look into that? What would that day look like? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. What would that day look like? What a cataclysmic event is going to be? A cataclysmic event it's going to be. Can you imagine when the prophet says, I saw, I was made to see this present heaven and earth rolled away like people roll a scroll, like you roll a carpet. Rolled away. And what you've seen right now, all symptoms, signs, tsunamis, earthquakes, but now it's going to be a combination of all of that. So you know that no child of God will be here when that is happening. So you see, that's why we go up. He takes us up. See that? So as to clean this dirty, messed up earth because iniquity has pervaded it. But then there's going to be, and then of course he judges Satan and all that, Revelation 20 verse 10. And then the, he now says, you know, when you get to Revelation 21, 22, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. A new heaven and a new earth. A new heaven and a new earth. In which dwells righteousness, Paul tells us. And then later on, he sees the city of God descending from heaven like a bride prepared. And that's the new Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem coming down. The same, And then Revelation 19, Christ and his saints. So we're coming back down to the earth. If your theology hasn't reached that level, I say read some more. So it's not just go to heaven, go to heaven, go to heaven. No, we go to heaven for this, but we're coming back down to the new heaven and to the new earth because we are made for the earth. So then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. Wow. And I saw the dead. So this is not chronological in, in order or in sequence. It's just showing you pictures he saw. And, and then I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were open. So you see, this paints the picture of uh, the fact that death is not the end of the story. Oh, Lord, that's not my message today. But, but the dead were raised back to life to give an account. Let's finish it. Verse 12. I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. Where will you be then, O human? Where will you be then? You under the sound of my voice, right? Where will you be? standing before God and books were open. Oh, so some people are taking records. So you see, they are recorders of deeds. Angels are recording things. There are heavenly recorders of deeds who are recording things. That's why you got to be careful, oh politician. You got to be careful, oh leader, especially for you leaders who, are, who have the capacity and the influence, uh, the capacity to influence people. Books have been written. The books were opened. Oh, but there was this particular book that they now called the book of life says the book of life, but watch this, the dead were judged according to their work. So you see, this is not the judgment of saints because the judgment of saints is, is in Christ. It is a matter of, did you receive Christ or not? If they are judged by their works, then this is not for the saints. This is for the rest of humanity who perhaps did not receive Christ because they were judged by their works, all right? Verse 13, the sea gave up the dead. So it goes back again to what he was saying earlier. The sea gave up the dead who were in it and death and Hades delivered of the dead who were in them and they were judged. So death is also like a container. It's going to give up the dead that it's holding. And they were judged, each one according to his works. All right? But watch this. In the same token, death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. So even death and Hades were judged also. Hallelujah. And he said, that's the second death. But verse 15, and anyone, oh, so, so, saints of God, let's hear that. And I pray this is not us. This is for the rest of humanity. Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So you know, if you're cast into the same place where death is cast into, then it's not a good thing. <laughs> it's definitely not a good thing. You can see that. If, if you and death are going to be in the same place, if you and Hades, are going to be in the same plan. Later on, Revelation 20, verse 10, actually earlier on, verse 10, Satan too. So there's no way you and Satan should be in the same place. <laughs> no way, it's wrong. So you want to be in the side of God. You want to be in the side of Christ. 
You want to be with the 140, you know, well, 144,000 a special class. But you want to be in Revelation 7. Revelation 7 shows us a multitude from all nations, which no man could number. And they sang praises to God and they made melodies in the presence of God. That's where you want to be. So all your pursuit on planet Earth, make sure you're aiming for this. Because if you get whatever, billionaire, buy the whole planet if you can. Go to the moon. Do whatever. Put your name on, on the stars, assuming we're able to do that. Cancel people. Control people. Uh, what is that one? Depopulate. Those who want to depopulate humanity. Like God sent you to do that. That's your job. Your job is to depopulate humanity. Depopulate people. That's your job. You want to thump your chest and say, when you stand before God, oh, I'm the one who depopulated planet Earth. I, I took out three million people. Really? Okay. Your judgment is waiting for you. But you want to be in Revelation 7. You don't want to be here. Whatever you accomplish in this world. Those of you striking this with the devil. Well, Isaiah will tell you, your covenant with death will not stand. Your agreement with hell will not stand. It's, death will show you that he, he, is, he is a disgraced deceiver than you are. Satan will show you he, there's a reason he's called the deceiver. You're going to find that you've been deceived. Wave a few changes before your face and then you sell your soul. Say, I give him my shirt to the devil. You're foolish. You're the one who's, who's short changed. You're the one who's getting the shorter end of the stick. You're the one who has been deceived. Turn away now that you have the time and embrace the salvation that God gives. Because if not, this is where you're going to find yourself. Lord, we pray. But particularly for our members, members of our families, Lord. Those who are on the highway to this, to this event, Lord God. Oh, Father, in your mercy, pull them back. In your mercy, oh God, pull them back. Lord, let your everlasting arms wrap around them and pull them out from the from the from the from the grip of death, from the grip of Satan, from the grip of iniquity and deception. That Lord, none of our family members, at least those who are alive right now, we don't know about those who died before this time, but those who are alive now, we pray, oh God, that they will come to salvation. We pray, oh God, that the spirit of grace and supplication will come upon them. We pray, oh God, that conviction of the spirit will come upon them to the degree, Lord, that they will embrace the salvation that is in Christ Jesus. The Lord, their names will be written in the book of life. That they will have a personal encounter with Jesus. And more so those who, who had served God in the past and for some reason you've turned away, you've gone to something else. Oh God, reprove, rebuke, correct, chastise, oh God. Bring them back, Lord. Turn them back to you. Shake them, oh God. Awaken them from their slumber and from their deception, Father. That they will truly embrace the truth that they will discover the grace of the Lord Jesus that bringeth salvation, that their Lord will come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved, oh Father. We pray this for family members. We thank you, Lord, for the concept of family. We give you thanks again for the concept, for the mountain of the family. It is in your wisdom that you designed family. And we declare, Lord, that family is blessed. We receive your wisdom. And again, we pray, Lord, that that blessing you put on the family will become our reality will become our portion. And not just us, but everyone who truly loves you, everyone who truly seeks out for you, everyone who truly thirsts and yearns for you, Lord, and for righteousness and for goodness. Thank you for your eternal blessings in Jesus' name. Amen and amen until we come your way again shortly. Stay elevated. We love you. God bless you. Bye-bye now.